Hello! Welcome to Zim Capture. I'm inventor Dan Zen, and Zim at zimjs.com is an open source library to help you code interactive media on the HTML canvas using JavaScript and CreateJS. In this capture, I'd like to talk about how we can get started coding in Zim. Okay, let's take a look at the Zim site at zimjs.com. If you haven't been to Zim before, then please have a look over the site. There, there's examples here of the code, and you can click next and, and get different, different examples. There's a whole bunch of them, or click these little dots to get there faster. And there's a listing of the features of Zim, like one line drag and drop, multiple types of hit tests, all the components like buttons and panes and tabs, etc. There's the applications, types of applications we can build, examples of projects that have been built. If we come down, there's a news section, so sometimes reading about things is helpful, and then a whole series of Zim bits of examples of interactive media made with Zim. So this capture is how to begin. Well, traditionally we would go to the frame area and that shows us different templates that we can use. But these ones we would have to download the source and save that and sometimes that can be tricky. There are instructions there, but what we've done is made it even easier. If You just scroll down here, there's now a zim zip. So grab the zim zip and I would do that. Just before we leave though, there is a doc section which shows us all of the things that we can code once we open up the zim zip and start coding. There's also the learn section. If you're new to coding, hopefully you're maybe you're coming from the learn section, but please look at the learn section. There's all sorts of tutorials and examples and you, you may have come from there and that's, that's great. Alrighty, so we hit the zim zip here and that downloads the zip. So let's go find it. Here it is here, and we open it up. Now, don't start coding in the zim zip itself. All right, that won't hook things up properly. So you want to extract that, pull that out there and put it somewhere. There it is, zim. Let's open up the folder and see what's inside. Inside, we've got a readme, so that's excellent. You should definitely read the readme. That tells you all you need to know here. Here are the templates as well that, that would have come from that zim frame page. And the template that we're using, or that we will use, is the Zim Fit template. So if I open that up, here's what it looks like. And this is why it's called Fit. When you change the browser window, it fits the browser window. So it keeps the aspect ratio, and that makes it easier to code. You have a width and a height that you can code for, and you know where things will be positioned. But then Zim will handle all of the scaling for you. Now, if you were on mobile, that doesn't look so great, so you would need to use the full mode for that and then apply custom scaling. Uh, yeah, and Zim has a bunch of functions that will help you with that. Okay, so this is the fit template, but how do you edit that? When we pressed it, it opened up in a browser. Darn, you know, how do I, how do I get in there and edit that code? Well, you would use a, a code editor, so I'll right-click here. I'm going to open it up with Atom, but you could use Brackets or Sublime or a text editor or Dreamweaver or whatever it is, or whatever editor. Atom is great. It's free. So I'm opening it up with Atom here, Quick, like so. And here she comes. And here it's it's here's the template. It's in HTML. So we put our JavaScript in an HTML page, and then we view that in a browser, or upload it to a server to, you know, to see, etc. So this is very traditional. The beginning of the HTML here with the HTML head title. Now we've got a bunch of stuff here. We'll come back to that. There's some styling on the body to get the body's background color. That was the black in the back that we saw. There's a script tag, and indeed, this is the main script tag where we start our template proper. We end that script tag, we end our head, and in the body of the HTML, where you would normally put a bunch of HTML, there's nothing. Uh, Zim will make the, the canvas for you and the stage in which we put things. Okay, so, and there's the end of the HTML. So let's pop on back up. Now, I don't want to spend too much time talking through the template here. Maybe a Zim capture will follow on all the nuances of the temple. Uh, the temple. <laughs> the temple, the template. 
it shows you some scaling options. We've chosen fit. We've given it some dimensions and a color. We've made a new frame object. When the frame is ready, this is the code that runs. And we can collect the, the, a reference to the stage. There we have the stage. Uh, the stage width and the stage height is also available for us. Right here it says, put your code here. You can delete this code. So that was that sample button that was in there. And then at the end of our template, we have a stage.update. If we want to see the, whatever we've made on the stage, if we want to see that, we have to do a stage.update, and it will update that for us. The button says, hey, make a new Zim button, store it in a variable button, center that button on the stage, and when we click on the button, call this function right here. It's a second parameter of the on method. Now, if you don't know what a method is and parameters and all that, make sure that you go into the Zim Learn section and learn about parameters and functions and so forth. Okay, variables, etc. That's all in there in a what is series. But here we're calling a Zim function called Zgo. There's a bunch of short ones. I'll show you where we can see find those later, and that goes off to a different URL. But if we don't want a button, this is where we start coding, right here. So this Zim capture was about, hey, how do we start coding in Zim? Well, you download the zip, you open up this file. Now, to tell you the truth, you probably shouldn't be uh, adjusting the fit template exactly. So why don't we go File, Save As, and then we can call this First project or whatever dot html so now we've got our own page that we're adjusting and we keep those templates around so that we can make a you know a, a new project later from from the template so in here we might say hey get, let's make a circle bar circle equals a new zim dot circle and in that circle we can give it a radius of say 100 and make it red, something like that. Uh, by the way, up here we can also change the color. That's that lime green, lime green and red, maybe too holiday for me. So let's just change that to number sign DDD. -D -D. That's a, a light gray. And that will be the background color of the stage passed in there. So great. Now we won't see that unless we add it to the stage. So we can make objects and, and uh, we don't have to add them to the stage, but if we want to see them, then we need to add them to the stage. So that would be, for instance, the traditional way would be stage dot add child circle. But that circle has its registration point in the middle, and this would just add it at position zero zero. There's the stage dot update. Now we can view this in a browser. And oh, great. You know, there's the circle, but it's at zero, zero, so in the center there, so that's not too great. We can move that around with an X and a Y, or we can apply the Zim convenience method circle dot center on the stage. So this will both add it to the stage, stage and center it on the stage. Refresh. There we go. And then we can continue on with various Zim functions to build interactive media. And there's all sorts of examples of that in the Zim bits. And they all use this template too. So um, it becomes quite easy to sort of take some code from there and try it out here. For instance, circle.drag, if we wanted to drag the circle, is we save here, and circle.drag circle. Now once it, uh, Zim is very easy. For, for making interactive media with code, solely with code like this, uh, you know, you just can't get much easier than this type of um, code right here. So there's other things we can do with the drag. Uh, let's just pop on out, though, and take a look at the documentation to see, you know, what other things we can do. But this is really what I wanted to show you in this Zim Capture is where do we start coding here? How, how, do we, how do we start coding? And here we are coding. Okay, that's great. Let's open up the uh, Zim page here and then click on Docs. The Docs have, there's the Zog that we had looked at and the Zgo. Um, the Docs have a bunch of 
coding help as well so that we can get random numbers easily and other things like that. But where it really picks up here is in the Zim create module. Here are all the, the functions, the handy functions that have been added, like drag, so how to drag something, various types of hit tests, how to move and animate, one line move and animate, scales and centerings in place, etc. Uh, the build module has a bunch of components and shapes, so things like uh, circles, rectangles, triangles, various buttons, labels, waiters, windows, checkboxes, etc. And then there's some advanced uh, features as well for page management, etc. There's the Zim frame, so you can see and any of these you open up, by the way, so if we wanted to uh, look at a button to see what was available for us, we expand that, and here's all the parameters for a button. It gives you examples, it describes uh, the parameters, it says what methods and properties it has, etc. All right, so that is Zim and how to get started. This has been a Zim capture. Basically, you get the Zim zip. Read that README in the Zim zip. That helps. It's got sort of uh, updates as well as to what's been happening with Zim and resources linked there. So read the README. Open up one of those templates. Maybe save it as something else, a, a project. Make a project folder, perhaps. Put it in a project folder. And then you go to where, where it says, put your code here and you start coding. Woohoo! Well done. We'll talk to you later. Ciao.